Welcome back to our little TV show called Pro Wrestling Review, the extremely structured TV show we call Pro Wrestling Review. I'm Rennie Detour from the Tribune Review. I'm Brian Krasner from the Daily News. Joining us this week is James DeBruza to our left and Th Thomas Combetti to the far <laughs> right. Why, thank you, sir. You're, you're quite welcome. Yeah, may I have hold another? Hold it, hold it. Yes, thank you. Okay, that, was that your <laughs> just line? Had a, I just had a check, right. I, I forget how we structured this thing. Damn. I'm well, we can say one thing. Uh, this show does deliver on its promises, as you saw earlier with the uh, clip of Tito Santana watching his life flash before his eyes, courtesy of the Barbarian. So you're welcome from Pro Wrestling Review. And later, just to prove the diversity of this show, we're going to get into some uh, Turkish prison wrestling. <laughs> so. That's always a nice touch. Yeah, that'd be nice. So, you know, the kids at home, all three of them who watch this stuff, it's for you. <laughs> The true there's, fans. Yeah, yeah. There's, um, there's some drug use, so, you know, obviously Brian Christopher is involved in one of the matches, but uh, we'll get to him later. Uh, okay, well, why don't we start talking a little bit about Raw and uh, the World Wrestling Federation Championship match between Steve Austin and hey, Chris Benoit. Earlier in the night, Vince McMahon came out and said that uh, Chris Benoit and Chris Jericho would have a chance to earn the shot. Chris Jericho, of course, fought the big slow, and Chris Benoit <laughs> took on Rhino in what was a very good match. And yeah. Obviously, uh, as you can tell, McMahon picked Chris Benoit. Yes, he did. And uh, I, my kind of actually, my thinking, I was really starting to wonder if they were going to do it because uh, putting Jericho in with the Big Show, and considering that match was uh, second out of the two matches, um, I was kind of thinking along the lines that Big Show was going to kill him, and they were going to pick Jericho because he was going to be, you know, tattered and torn, and he was going to pull out the big upset in Canada, you know, and lose the title to Austin at King of the Ring. But obviously, that's not what happened. Instead. Yeah, instead, uh, fans, and Canadian fans especially, got a nice little surprise in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and uh, let's discuss. <laughs> well, I, th I thought the match itself was real, real good. They had me convinced Chris Benoit was going to win the belt from yeah. like, pretty much all the way through the match. It just seemed like perfect, perfect structure to the match. There's that word again. Perfect structure to the match where the face is going to come back and get the pin or tap Reach out or whatever. Reach the cue card, Jim. Yeah. No, they're over Tap there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, this is the script. That's the cue. Yeah, right. It wasn't like they just threw the match together, is what you're saying. Right. It seemed very well planned, and like I said, they had me convinced Benoit was going to win. I like the little uh, ring introductions that they did, you know, kind of like ECW without the screaming announcer, but yeah. I liked it with uh, Chris Benoit getting a ring introduction. And of course, Earl got the ring introduction for old time's sake, and we'll, we'll get to that in a little yeah. bit. But, you know, I, I thought that was a kind of a nice touch for the main event of a Raw, even though it was done for the finish of the match. Right. I was just dumbfounded over the fact that Austin took like three back suplexes and still got up and walked around because he is stone cold. <laughs> well, he almost is that did. what the cue card says? It doesn't stone cold, right. Cerebral assassin. That's the wrong person we're talking yeah, about. Exactly. Yeah, that's card three of eight. So Somebody needs but to I, slap Mr. Dickinson. But, <laughs> but in all seriousness, <laughs> if this is the heel Austin with better match quality and without minus obviously the outside brawling into the crowd, I am so glad he's a heel right now, and don't ever go back to being a face, no matter what but, Garth Brooks but, says. But Thomas, Garth Brooks? Thomas, he's a cowardly heel right now. Big that's cowardly. the best that's, kind of. That's bad. The best kind of heel. People Jim. don't like that, James. <laughs> well, you know what? One thing about Austin is, like Tom said, his match quality has stepped it up. And you know, the guy took a superplex last week, and he delivered one this week, albeit yeah. from the second rope. But still, I mean, considering the guy's surgery, uh, you know, he's come a long way. Yeah, he certainly has, and. Uh, it's, it's just another, oh God, it's like you say this every week, but this is, I guess, why they're still in business. You know, you have a guy who's on top who's still going out and, and working hard and taking all the necessary bumps in order to, uh, in order to continue the storylines. Unlike The Undertaker, who has abducted ECW's fan cam, but <laughs> That's right. we'll, we'll, we'll get to that later also. Oh but um, obviously, the, the, the big news coming out of that uh, the match was the, the finish, and I'm sure everybody on this panel saw it coming. Right. But uh, I mean, what did you guys think about it? Obviously, we revisited Survivor Series 97 and 98, as Tom pointed out. Well, yeah, not sure. really. It wasn't the sharpshooter. It was the crossface. Yeah. Moron. you got to get your facts right here. I don't see the word moron on that card over there. No, I don't either. Pal. Something with an M. No. But obviously, as you said, Brian, or I don't know which one of you guys said it, what? it was coming from a mile away. It just, it's truly a shame. I, can't they get over the fact that Bret Hart, enough joking with Bret Hart, and granted, he's a perfect target of this show, but either bring him back to the WWF or WCW or forget about him. End of story. Yeah. I, I think a lot of people overreacted to Wonder Who. Uh, he'll be my rant topic later, so stay tuned. Um, but I, I think a lot of people did overreact to this. You know, it was... I think it's legit. You know, you have a legitimate argument if you say, "Well, they've done this four or five times already, and it's the impact's kind of dead." But you know, I guess Vince couldn't pass up the chance of doing this in Calgary. 
But I, I think the thing that needs to be pointed out for all the people who are saying that, well, can't they stop slapping Bret Hart in the face? Well, if, if you watched all of Raw, because I'm pretty sure it didn't end once uh, you know Austin won the match, you know, Vince and Austin got the hell kicked out of him after the match was over. So sort of like what happened to Bret Hart's Survivor Series, where he never got that revenge. You know, after Bret Hart, after Benoit got you know screwed out of the title, Jericho and Benoit just beat their asses. So I mean, what, what's the big deal? I, I must point out the fact that Bret Hart did in fact get revenge at Survivor Series. He oh, did throw that monitor true. down and kicked it. He broke. Whoa. He, he broke. And wrote WCW in the air with his fingers. Hey, what, what else do you need? He also got like 18 million from WCW, but that's not the point. Yeah. Yeah. Can you help me sell out Vince? But the point is, I think the, the ending itself <laughs> of the match, I don't know if it was necessarily to, to do that from a story standpoint. I think, I think in that case, you have Austin win. I mean, I don't think it hurts Benoit. Still yeah, but it puts more heat on Austin, though. I mean, it, it does. But in Canada, people are going to hate him. Well, find a way, you can still find a way to get Austin the cheap victory, and I think you'll still get the amount of hatred there that this did. I think a lot of people were confused last or Monday night when all this went down. Well, I mean, one of the things that your rant topic brought up was the fact that they were in Calgary, but earlier in the evening they recognized Stu Hart. Uh, the crowd gave him a standing ovation. So it's kind of one of those things where fans are pointing out that you know maybe they slapped Stu Hart in the face, having him being there, considering what happened with Owen, and, yeah. and, and to a degree with Brett. So, I mean, I think that's where kind of where the venom from yours truly <laughs> Yeah, from. but the thing that nobody's pointed out yet is that, you know, there was a meeting between the Hearts and the WWF earlier that day when they taped Raw. Um, nobody has pointed out, nobody seems to know whether or not these ideas were run past the Hearts. I mean, it could be one of the situations where they explained the situation and said, look, this is what we're doing. We don't know that they didn't already know this was going to happen. I mean, you know, Bruce Hart's running his own wrestling promotion. He's not an idiot. You know, he obviously he's going to know whenever he was sitting in the crowd watching that show what was transpiring. So who's to say that they didn't know this was going to happen anyway? We don't know that. I mean, it's a good point, but I mean, it's, it's one that needed to be addressed, right, exactly. considering that a lot of people are talking about it. But we're going to come back and we're going to talk a little bit more about Raw, so please stay with us. Welcome back to the Illich Skipper Comedy Hour. Uh, happy that you came back. Uh, we talked a little bit last week about the beginning of the WCW angle, and we think we saw that materialize a little bit further this week uh, with the clip you saw at the top of this segment and that being the uh, introduction of Lance, I'm so excited and I just can't hide it, Storm. Where the hell did that come from? I don't know. How they ever decide on him? Sorry. Yeah, wonder. Hmm. So, that's right, I have nothing and, else. Uh, you picked the ball up, now. Yeah, that, that's the extent of my contribution for this yeah. segment. I'll see you guys later. <laughs> that was James DeBruzzo. I'll be writing a story over here. James DeBruzzo's 30-second commentary brought to you by Kellogg. <laughs> well, obviously, wrestling and logic is something we always address on here. And, you know, there's very much yeah. logic. It, it paces this show. But uh, we were talking earlier about why Lance Storm exactly showed up wearing his candy cane pants and white boots. But uh, that's just window dressing, so we won't even address that. <laughs> address this. Well, to talk about why it was Lance Storm, I think it's just because they were in Canada. I don't yeah. think it was an, a hard thing to decide. Um, well, they could have used Mike Austin for that. He's yeah, but he's not Canadian. Canada. He's part of Team Canada. Well, they could use Elix Skipper. He is Canadian. Or Jim Duggan, he wanted to be Canadian. Perhaps it's best to be in this part of the conversation. Yes, probably. Uh, but, you know, yeah, nonetheless, I think the way they, they handled it was, uh, was pretty effective. Uh, I, I know there's already some talk on the Internet that, oh, they, he, he, was interu he, he was interrupting a low-level match. It shows you what they think of WCW. No. Well, so along that kind of that reading too much into it? Yeah. Along those lines, Scott Hall, when he debuted on Nitro, didn't he interrupt a uh, Mike Enos? Mike Enos match, yep. <laughs> Imagine Scott, he, I think it was Scotty Riggs he was wrestling. Oh, man. You sure it was Scott? I think it was, uh, who the hell cares who he was wrestling? But the point is, you know, Scott er, Hudson. Oh. <laughs> Scott Hall could have feuded with Mike Enos, but they did that pesky NWO thing. Yeah. What it's a shame. Thinking? They missed the boat. I they did. The NWO would still be the hot train running down the tracks out of control that it was four years ago. I thought that was the NWO. Scott Norton riding the caboose. Yeah. <laughs> no selling everything. Um, but just more, uh, more, more along the lines of the whole Landstorm thing. Uh, I think that one of the ways you can tell that the, uh, the segment they did kind of was effective, just proof of which came from my own living room, the people I was watching the show with were kind of like, you know, as soon as that happened, we're like, wow, somebody's got to be next. Who, who's coming out next? And especially when Vince was talking to the security in the next segment, telling them, you know, be on the lookout for WCW talent. My whole living room was like, oh, there's someone else, there's someone else. And granted, you know, I think most people probably after the show is over, looking back to think, okay, well, I can see why there was nobody else. They were building that anticipation factor that you had to watch the rest of the show just in case you were going to miss Scott Stein or Booker T or something like that. Which hopefully will be the same thing that will draw people to SmackDown and draw people to Raw the next week, you know, hoping to see some more WCW talent. 
Well, it's interesting to say, obviously, they chose Lance Storm for the Calgary connection. No debating that. That's but a it, good tag team, yeah. by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but it's also a point, a point to bring up. Lance Storm is obviously pretty talented. They're one of the guys Vince McMahon and WWE thinks they can push. So it'll be interesting to see who shows up next. Obviously, if you like Booker T or Mike Boston or someone like that. Obviously, guys that they think they're going to want to push and the guys that are talented are really going to be the ones that show up on Raw. Yeah, somehow I, I can't imagine the Kiwi coming out and having the same impact last <laughs> night as Lance Storm did. Maybe in Pittsburgh. But, but yeah, <laughs> Pittsburgh it being the Kiwi town. <laughs> I think hey, come on, now. on the program, hey, didn't Bret Hart say that about Pittsburgh? Yeah, too? yeah, he did. Damn it, if he won't live the rest of his life in misery and shame. But it's interesting what Jim said about who's going to show up next, because yeah. that was one of the, the big things with the NWO and why it was so popular, right. and why WCW became so popular, was that you know each week you didn't know which wrestlers were going to show up, and you know that's one thing that maybe the WWF can build on, and the fact that, yeah, you don't want to have too many guys show up on one show. I mean, right. last night they could have ushered out like Storm, Awesome, and you know Booker T or something, and it would have yeah. been a waste. But they're going to do this in a you know I guess orderly fashion. They're going to just have guys come out whenever they feel necessary, but. You know, like I said, with the NWO, it's one of those things where if they do this right, they can draw some more intrigue without having to water down their WWF program with WCW wrestlers. Well, the other thing, too, is that uh, it, it was Memorial Day holiday this past Monday, and traditionally, uh, people aren't really watching a whole lot of television on the holidays. I think the, ra the ratings aren't out as of this taping because they, they're delayed always on the holiday. But it, that's just viewership. Viewership is always down because people are partying and barbecuing and drinking and drinking and drinking. Um, so they're really not watching television. And so, why card out three or four WCW guys whenever you can, you know, bring out a Lance Storm and a loser like me, who's actually sitting at home watching Raw on Memorial Day evening, can tell all his friends, "Hey, Lance Storm was big of you to admit yeah. that." Yeah, well, you know, uh, so that everybody is actually, you know, will, will want to tune in next time and say, "Damn, you know, I missed Lance Storm. I don't want to miss, you know, Booker T or Scott Steiner or Hulk Hogan, who was on Raw, by the way." Yeah, I mean, we, we probably should talk about the uh, the wonderful footage brought to us by the WWE. But if you bring up Hulk Hogan, you got to bring up Jake Roberts, you got to bring up Randy yeah, Savage, yeah. you got to bring up Bad News Allen Brown. Was he playing the sax? No, I think he was stuck in the tuba. <laughs> <laughs> but we'll, we'll, have to check, we'll have to check the footage on that. But no, we yeah. did see uh, some vintage WWE footage from the uh, Slammies of '87. I wanted to see Harley Race and Duggan fighting oh, in the I birthday know. cake. That was great. That, that's that, a fight, that fight lasted about the whole show. Was it about three yeah, hours? Really show? Did. Yeah. I guess Harley Race didn't have anything to say. Or any awards to present, you know, the Jesse Abadi Award, just yeah. which Rick Rude won, and then he donned his body suit. How, how do you say that? Baby suit, birth suit, suit, birth, whatever. It, it's teleprompter. It's in gibberish. Oh, it sucks. Um, it, it's funny though because uh, you, you got to give Vince a little bit of credit because those those clips of him singing "Sand Back" from 1987 definitely weren't complimentary, especially those dance moves. They they were bad. I've got the rhythm of a dead man, but you know, I was pretty embarrassed for him. Um, but. You know, they, they, of course they did keep the clip on long enough just to see Hogan rise up from behind with his bass like Gene Simmons on steroids. I just wonder how many posts on how many different websites right now. Next week on Raw, confirmed, Hulk Hogan, either on yeah. SmackDown or Raw. We'll fight the big show. Plan revealed here. You gotta love people. I know. <laughs> hey, people. <laughs> But speaking of, you had a perfect transition of the rhythm of a dead man, and we can probably get into that maybe next segment about Perhaps. the dead man stalker. Actually, I think we have uh, some exclusive footage next segment that well, you were responsible for. Well, don't don't say it like that. <laughs> I want to talk about the dead hey, man. Hey, I saw the tape, pal, and it was you on it, so I'm gonna. You're Not by choice. As as I'm concerned. I was kidnapped at gunpoint. Thank you. Well, as we fade the black and white here, uh, we have some wonderful nuggets for you next segment, courtesy of Tom Combetti. And the rest of the I don't know. It's going to be great, so come on back. He has other jobs besides backyard wrestling. Here's one of them now. Hey! 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 Huh? TC customized site. This week we're going to provide a little something different. And Tom and Rennie went on location for the interview we've been hyping for two weeks now. It must have been quite an experience. Oh, that it was. I mean, most interviews usually are. You always find something new out about somebody. In this case, it was a backyard wrestler. And once again, as you pointed out last week, this will be the only interview we do with a backyard wrestler. So please don't send any tapes in or any things of that nature. Hit missing ears, broken teeth, chipped fingernails. Unless, of course, you're on that tape they're selling on the E! Network. You know, then, then yeah. you can point yourself well, out. Well, they do that for a living, though. We don't want to oh, get yeah, confused well. with that. But uh, that's the one where if there was any question whether or not Tylee Buck was a tramp... <laughs> She sort of proved it. Another word. Another first for progressing review. Yeah. But anyway, Rennie, obviously you filmed this and I conducted the interview. We got the call from uh, 
I don't know if we should say, well, his name's on the interview anyway. Backyard wrestler named Timmy Rock, who's been in the backyard wrestling business, if you will, for probably a good part of a year or two. And he just wanted to tell his side of the story with basically, I always say basically when I'm trying to be serious, so correct me on that. You know, it can be like Pee Wee's big word of the day. So basically, cheering. <laughs> he wanted to get his side of the story out because shows like 2020, news, time, news shows like that have given Backyard Wrestling a bad name. And in no direct relation, I think they've doing, been doing it on purpose though, if you ask me, have upped Backyard Wrestling so more people do it. It seems more appealing now. It's on 2020, it's on Dateline, some of those other talk shows. But, well, we're going to go to a clip in a little bit. Just, well, the first part, I guess, if, if you will, of the clip, where he discusses his well, we background. Basically, we basically show up at his house, if we can call it that. And is that what we're going to call it? Yeah. Well, he, I think I believe he refers to it as an apartment, but uh, <laughs> it, it's not the uh, you know the best looking thing. It's it's graphic footage and viewer discretion is advised. But um, it was an interesting experience, and like you said, Tom, he just wants to kind of clarify the uh, skeptics of backyard wrestling, and there's probably four of them sitting here. But uh, like I said, he just wants to tell his side of the story, so uh, that's about it. I don't. Well, we'd like to reiterate the fact that. Backyard wrestling in no way, shape, or form will lead you to the big leagues. If that's the case, go to a wrestling school, many different wrestling schools to choose from. Backyard wrestling will, to. Backyard, we've said this many, many times. Backyard wrestling will not get you noticed. Rubbing someone's face in glass, power driving them on a car, all very fun things, but they won't get you noticed. So do you guys have anything to say, you know, just in general, backyard wrestling? No. Do you guys no. get, a bonus, you you get a bonus in your pay for going on location? We get paid. <laughs> Well, actually, we had to take a uh, Glock 9 with this because yeah. it wasn't in the best of neighborhoods. Not every day uh, two reporters get lured into a dark, dingy basement. And for those of you out there, a Glock 9, I believe, is a porcelain gun made in Sweden. So yes. uh, it doesn't kill anybody. Know it that. just fills them with self-doubt yeah. you know, when you point right. it at them. That's right. So, well, there's not much more else to say. It's like this sort of skepticism, you know. It makes you skeptical. Well, we're all skeptical. But like I said, we basically... This is the first part of the interview, so enjoy. And uh, like Rennie said, viewer discretion is advised. I believe there might be maybe, I can't say ass crack, can I? <laughs> well, I just did, but I don't know if that's exposed or not because he is down on his luck. So just enjoy this for what it yeah. is. And remember, enjoy it for what it is. Hey, let's, I think I see somebody over there. I assume that's him. I mean, from all the descriptions I've got on him. So let's head over this way. I, well, that's either somebody just laying on the concrete floor with a mask on, or that's a former backyarder, or current backyarder. I think I should wake him? I don't know, he looks pretty irritable. I'll kick his do bag of dog food, maybe he'll wake up. Mr. Rock! Remember we talked on the phone the other day? Tom Combetti from Pro Wrestling Review. Ah, nice to meet you! How you doing? Good, good. That's uh, Mr. Detour from the Tripping Review. Here's a copy, free copy of the paper. I don't know if you can read it or not, but anyway. I'd like to ask you a couple questions, just, you know, give or take about your backyard wrestling, which you talked to me on the phone about. So if we could just sit down here, watch what come fall over the chair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need something to drink? Something? I got some, uh, no, I got some, some stuff there for you. What's the penguin for? It keeps me safe. Keeps you safe. Okay. Well, uh... <laughs> Once again, I'd like to thank you for this opportunity. And thank you for the shirt, too, by the way. I really don't own something like this. This is very, very nice. Is he all right? Is he coughing there a little bit? Yeah, do you have anthrax? Uh, uh, no. But anyway, let me see. I wrote some notes down on here. I always come prepared. But uh, what you said to us was you'd like to talk to us about backyard wrestling and about how all these reports on TV are accurate about backyarders basically being, well, wannabe wrestlers. And there's no future in it. And you told me you're basically living proof of this subject matter. Well, there's definitely no money in backyard wrestling, but uh, there's a definite pride factor that you get out of it. Um, the women love it. Care to um, elaborate a little more on well, that? Well, you know, you, you do the shows in the backyards, and the chicks love it, you know? They come and they wear the short skirts, and they, they ask you back to the apartments and the basements, and, you know. <laughs> There's been a lot of encounters here in this basement. You're sitting in a chair where there's been an encounter. <laughs> it's this cool. This chair. It's cool. Okay. She was cute. Oh, that's good. That's all we ask for. So, well, how did you get basically started in the backyard wrestling, if you don't mind me asking? Well, when I was younger, I was a big fan of the Iron Sheik. 
And he had those pointy boots. I remember the pointy boots, yes. So when I was younger, you know, I, I tried them on. I, you know, I, my friend had a pair, so. And then, so we just started wrestling one day, and we started beating the hell out of each other. So when we started bleeding, we kind of liked it. So basically, I don't know if you've heard of uh, sadomasochism. I believe that's how you pronounce it, Mr. Huh? No, no, it must be what we were talking about, being jumpy. Uh, you're basically turned on by blood in layman's terms. Yes, and others. And others. That's not too bad. Gentlemen, if I can interject for a moment, we're going to have to take a break. We're gonna, we'll are gonna we come back with the, uh, the more of this interview. Last week's winner, congratulations, Mr. Frog. And Rennie, if you will be so kind as to read the questions, because Kermit is waiting. That's nice. He can sit on your lap. Okay. Qu <laughs> Good Lord. Question number one. What was Hulk Hogan's character from Rocky Three? It was Thunder Lips. Uh, which singer and video featured Captain Lou Albano? It was Cindy Lauper's Girls Just Want to Have Fun. Name a tag team partner of Barry Windham's. Uh, there were several answers. Uh, Mike Rotunda is one that we accepted. And last week's question. Uh, what event, I'm sorry, not what event, who did Alex Wright face at Starcade 1994, and it is Jean-Paul Levesque. We also would have accepted Triple H since they're kind of the same person, but not really. <laughs> and this week's winner is Rachel, I'm going to say Cy Wright if I'm wrong, send me an email, I'm sure I'll read it. Uh, she's from New Eagle, PA, so congratulations. Yes, and Rachel, for answering those questions successfully and not insulting us. You win from the original Pizza Works a voucher for one large pizza in order of chicken wings and a carbonated beverage of your choice. And you can redeem those at the Jefferson Hills, Draboseburg, or Finleyville outlets. Do it now. And this week's question is, how many WrestleManias has Kamala appeared in? Once again, you got to answer the ones on the website. There's three there. Again, this question, how many WrestleManias did Kamala appear at? And he was at all 17 if you count hard. <laughs> <laughs> He may have been at 15 of them, I believe. Ooh. Tough. Actually, Kamala called us this week and begged us to get him on the show. So there you go, Mr. Mala. And uh, <laughs> good luck answering the trivia. Good luck to all. Email those, prowrestlingreview.com, and we're waiting to hear from you. Backyarder, <laughs> and once again, this is the only interview we're going to conduct with a backyard wrestler, if we can even classify him as that. So, if we please. get an email from any backyard wrestlers, you will be mail bombed immediately. <laughs> and we mean that in most sincere <coughs> All right. apologies. Not we're, we're not beyond sending out computer viruses. Hey, I can live with that. No mail bombs. Uh, that's just well, a, same thing. It's a pain in the ass for the poor post office. Well, people. no, I didn't mean. I didn't mean by snail mail. I meant ma email. Snail mail, mail. That's actually what oh, okay. U.S. Postal Service mail is going. And now we're straightened out. That sounded good. Speaking of getting illegal <laughs> substances through the mail, uh, Brian Christopher was... Oh, nice, nice segue there. Yeah, and it wasn't totally accurate, but that's okay. Uh, Brian Christopher was fired from the WWF. Uh, Brian Christopher being Grandmaster Sex A from Too Cool, uh, was fired by the WWF Monday afternoon. Uh, apparently, he was crossing the Canadian border and forgot to ditch the illegal drugs before he got there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have one point. He, he, he knows he's going over a border. <laughs> I know. He knows there's a probably better than every chance he's going to be stopped and, I don't know, whatever it is they do there. How stupid do you have to be to carry illegal drugs? Did we you see his interviews the past three or four yeah, weeks? That's right. But you're going I thought he was country. mildly retarded. Now we know the cause of I it. You're going, to, you're going to get stopped by customs. You're, you're going to be, I mean, they're going to investigate. How, how stupid do you have to be? Well, you missed the Bob Ryder call and the follow-up to the one he had about Martha Hart, which I'll rip him, rip him for later. The uh, Jerry Lawler was right. They would plant drugs in my son's trunk. No. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Yeah, where's Blackjack Brown at to say they planted drugs on him? I mean, he's always good for those insider <laughs> tips that nobody else dust. ever hears about. I think that goes along the same lines as your comment about why didn't they put the drugs in Steve Blackman's kendo stick bag then, yeah. rather than... Didn't Val Venus put a Inanimate object in there one time. <laughs> you better watch it. Well, he put a uh, pirate stub ticket, actually. Yeah, that's right. It was a green weenie, kids. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Sorry. Speaking of illegal substances and uh, people on heavy amounts of drugs, we were, uh, you were interviewing the backyard wrestler last segment, and uh, I don't know what, what, so far from what, from what we've heard, learned from this man so far. Man? If we call him a man. Uh, hey, he's scored. He has to be a man. He's had glass in his back. He's a man. <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he seemed, it was a little sad to me because it seems to me like, hey, you'll never have a job. 
And I mean, we saw that thing earlier, I mean, our little promo piece, where I don't know if he was being chased by a hornet <laughs> or what he was I doing. think it was a stray cat, honestly. I talked to him I about that. dragonfly. Day. You know how those things hang around pools. <laughs> Could've but you would figure a backyard wrestler would be afraid of something like that. You would figure, so, so, so don't, I mean, have they ditched the uh, swarm of Hornets matches? That they don't have them anymore. He didn't he really. Uh, he didn't really elaborate on any kind of insects or mammals in their matches, like piranhas or anything like that. But uh, <laughs> you notice being of the mammal family. <laughs> well, no, no, no. Uh, it was a segue. Piranhas, insects, mud bees. <laughs> but anyway, bats. you see, he is a little jumpy, and I believe that's all the blows to the head he's received. <laughs> a jumpy. Actually, off camera, he talked about how he was powerbombed on a red anthill. So oh, that, God. That, that's different. But he, but he had oh. a uh, uh, Mars bar in his pocket at the time well, too. There you so that's that that really track the red ants. The Worse Zag, than honey. Zagnut, I think. <laughs> Zag. <laughs> and some, some tab. Or name drop in here. But I believe we're going to go to part two of the interview. So if you can stomach any more of the interview with the backyard wrestler, I please watch. And we apologize for nothing. Unfortunately, I don't think you have the air on, or you might not even have the capability, so I had to don the shirt and actually take it off. So, But anyway, let's get back to the interview. You need here. the sleeves cut off here. Why? Show off the guns, you know. Guns by arms, right? Anyway, we were talking last time about a. You okay? Yeah. About uh, anthrax. No, actually, about your ability to uh, draw blood from an opponent and basically get turned on by it. So, uh, I'd like. Can you elaborate a little more on that? What exactly about the blood do you. I mean, do you use a weapon? Well, I had this friend. His name was uh, Super John Tate back in the EBW. And, uh, I've heard of him before, actually. He was a champ for a while. He wasn't a good wrestler. <laughs> Kind of big, you know. He just sat on people, you know how that works. So, um, no, we were wrestling one day when we were younger, about 12 years old, 13, and uh, in fact, it was this thing. This one. That stick. This is the stick that I first drew blood from Super John Tate. Well, apparently, it hasn't been used since. It's got the cobwebs on it. Yeah, so you can see a little bit right here. Yeah, actually, I do see that. That's John Tate blood. A red, it, you know. Vintage John Tate blood. Watch out, there's a cat here on the end of that. Oh. So, but do you condone the violence to see actually young children out there doing it to others? Well, uh, th there's a difference. Uh, people like me, I, I think it's real. I like to get the blood. Uh huh. I like the blood. Um, but some kids, they take it uh, a little seriously. But I think it's real. So basically, what? So, basically, somebody in your uh, shoes, let's say, uh. those lifts you're wearing, actually. You get a kick out of this, but you don't condone it for others. No, no, you gotta know what you're doing. You gotta know what you're doing. And I'm sure you know what you're doing, so, uh... Yeah, well, you know, you just gotta know, you know? I see that, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, along more lines, uh, what you told me over the phone in the interview was, uh, you fallen on some hard times. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is my apartment. Um... I don't have a lot of money right now. I've been out of work. I've been actually waiting for uh, a call from my, my friend Vince. Told me I could have a gig doing some opening slots, so... Um, which, uh, which Vince? No, what Vince are you referring to here? I can't say yet. Well, go ahead and take it. We're only the uh, Yes. Vince! It's v Vince! Speak up, Vince. Next week, Saturday. Setting up the ring? You mean wrestling in? Yeah, I'll do it. Huh? Yeah, I got a pen right here. Hey, let me in. Uh, that's okay. So I guess hey. you don't get a call from Vince once every lifetime, so. 4 p.m. Got 10 bucks. Got it. Thanks, buddy. But look, anyway. my career's fine. That was Vince. This is what I was talking about. Wow, isn't that a coincidence? Yeah, sorry about that. that, that you all right? That's fine, that's fine. I'm just worried about the dog here more than anything. These are vintage jeans here. <laughs> so, I, I take it, well, this was Vince, and he probably, what, did, what was the gist of the conversation? Well, he that? told me I was doing something in the ring. Um, I don't think it's setting up the ring. I, I think um, I think I'm going to be wrestling in an opening slot. Ten bucks. So Actually, I've heard you get as much as 30 or 40 a night. I mean, aren't you excited by that? You got a call from Vince. I would oh, be yeah, ecstatic. Yeah. It's good. I'm looking forward to it. Um, we'll see when we get there. It's up in a place called New Ken. New Ken, huh? Yeah. I got to be there at 4. 4, huh? Yeah. Not 3 or 2. No, no, no. Four. I got 4 o'clock. 
I see. So, I think you're happy. I mean, is this the first time you've worked in a while? I mean, shouldn't you be happy? I mean, ecstatic? Shouldn't you be, you know, just yeah. bouncing off the wall, so well, to speak? I'm all right, you know. It, I don't. I do a lot of work in the business, so, so you know, it's, it's here and there, but uh, I'll be all right. Well, then that's, that's excellent. I'm, I'm proud of, not proud of you because I can't. I haven't known you long enough to be proud of you. But uh, congratulations, Aaron. Uh, Thank you. Hey, first time you worked in a while. That's excellent. That's absolutely excellent. So uh, celebrate. I don't know. Thanks for coming. Uh, we're not done here, but uh, <laughs> I still have so many more things to ask you here. But just celebrate. Why not? Take uh, Sort of. It's kind of a mix of both. Um, we want to talk a little bit about Raw and what happened uh, with The Undertaker's wife. If it was his wife, we don't really know. It was, actually what? was his wife. Really? Yes, it was his wife. Wow. That maybe, was she was, maybe she was worth the tattoo on the throat then. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know after that. But uh, anyway, uh, you saw Raw, I'm sure, and you probably turned the channel as soon as you saw that. But uh, someone was actually filming The Undertaker's wife while she was brushing her hair wearing a robe. It was very convoluted and fun to watch. And so, <laughs> What was so fun to watch about it? I don't know. The I voice, just, right? Yeah, the, the voice was kind of neat. But, I mean, this just comes across, again, as one of those Vince Russo-type angles that's really not going anywhere. And um, I, I really don't know what they plan on doing with this whole thing. Well, clearly it's the Black Scorpion. I mean, it was the same voice. I'm betting it's on Robo Anderson. Cop. Yeah, Robocop. That'd be, that'd be nice. Yeah, what's what's what is Lex Luger doing these days? I ask you. Maybe it's, maybe it's the Rock. Oh, a deafening silence falls over the panel. <laughs> Either we don't know what we to say because basically the telephone prompter you know, has quit working. I'm gonna say, and I'm not gonna explain why. It'd be great if it was Jimmy Snuka. You at home understand. Those who understand know why that was funny, and those who don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> Well, I mean, if every cloud does have a silver lining, as they say, at least this will just, you know, pe people like PM Dawn, I can't say what I want to, yeah. so just basically miff people like that off and blame re wrestling for more society's problems. So there is some good in the angle. Maybe some people will die or something <laughs> because of the angle. And it's I'm being very facetious right now, but that's what some people believe to say. Don't worry, Tom. The emails are on their way. Yeah, I know they are. It's actually not that Snooker would be funny, but it would be kind of sick and twisted. But, but what, I mean, but seriously, what about The Rock? I don't think it'll be. I don't, I don't think it's possible to turn him at this point. Well, he hangs around cameras now. He's the oh, yeah, yeah, he can get cameras. But what if it was Dallas Page? But there was no brother at the end of what he was saying. Yeah, bang! <laughs> Look at her, bang! <laughs> did did anyone else? Well, think here's it? the question now. You got to get somebody to, to fill this role, obviously. Now, is this going to be one of those one night things at King of the Ring, or is this feud going to go on? With whoever we can, it may we can be. only hope it Jim, goes I don't on. even think the WWF knows. You know, it's probably going to be Kane or Big Show. Everyone's going to oh. be disappointed. And well, if GTV has taught us anything, maybe they'll just forget about it. Oh my God! What if it is the Big Show? They got Another deafening silence. How, no, wait a minute. Uh, he sucks. Big Show, uh, technically, Big Show was on Raw. How did he? Was that was that supposed to be live? Let's not feed? read a little bit too into this here. Lance Storm did come out with his gear on, and he had to change either in a stall or in the <laughs> WWF locker room, oblivious to everyone around him who didn't it's know he possible. was invading. You know what would have been great? Or I'll tell you what would be great if it, this ends up being the culprit. If next time they show Sarah, she's like cooking, and he's outside salivating, it ends up being Tommy Dreamer. <laughs> Oh, brother. <laughs> That'd be great, you know, bring that what Salisbury about, steak. The part here. I didn't understand is when she was, they were had the camera and he's like talking and, you know, salivating, as you said, over her. Um, she comes to the window and he's still, he just like standing there. Yeah. And she like looks the, the wrong way. So I, it's just. He was that concealed. It was okay. crap. But anyway, um, we're going to wrap this segment up and we're going to go to the final installment with our backyard friend. So please stay tuned. We're not done here, but uh, I still have so many more things to ask you here, but just celebrate. Why not? Uh, <laughs> what do you mean, celebrate? I... Here, come on, get on here. Come here. I'm not getting This is how we celebrate down here. Come on, come here. I'm not getting on a doll. With here, that. you push me then. Cameraman, can I push him? <laughs> ah, never mind. Well, you don't want to push me. No, I actually had some more questions for you, but uh, All right. if you're content with rolling the dolly around, that's fine and dandy, too. How does one get a dolly from uh I used to be a mover. Oh, see, I know something new about you every you second. You remember that show, uh, Moving, King Kong Bundy? That wasn't a show, that was a movie. But yes, I, 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 I was in the background. This, they gave me this. This was my payment. Really? For, in the movie. I think I got gypped. Yeah. There's mud all over the top. Richard Pryor signed a bottom here. 
Richard Pryor did. But see, it wore it off. I don't want to look this case up like mild cat hair you have floating around here everywhere. But you know, oh, I, used to have, I used to have a goat. He's gone. What was the goat? And, oh my god, look, a big spider. We'll take care of that. There's an instant life lost on Pro Wrestling Review. So, do you have anything you haven't told me yet? Can I see your driver's license, possibly? Yeah, but I don't have a license. Somehow that doesn't surprise me, but let, I'm sorry, let's get more back to this uh, little Vince conversation you had with him. So I guess he called you right from Stanford, Connecticut, huh? It, assuming this is the Vince we all know and uh, Well, Vince, he, he's coming to New Ken. Uh, does this Vince you're talking of go to New Ken? No, actually, he goes to uh, Willing Jesuit, I believe. He's a baseball player. That's the only Vince I know of. Bat? Stick? I, I, let's play a little huh? word association here. <laughs> I don't know who you're talking about. Well, frankly, this interview has no point to it whatsoever, <laughs> but let's keep talking, just for the hell of it. No, in all seriousness, um, how old are you now? Uh, 22. 22. I've been working in the business five years. How old have you been when you started then? <laughs> Never mind. 17 and a half. All right. Got a math wizard on our hands here. Anyway, where do you see yourself in five years? Uh... I hope I'm working for Vince. Well, this is a step in the right direction, I'll tell you that. But uh, you He know what? feeds he, his wrestlers. You know, you seem to have, uh, I need a pen here. You kind of, there's a little typo on here. Go get one over there. I, I believe it's on top of that shelf over there. And, uh, you know, let me make this correction for you. I don't know your education by any means. I don't have a pen. This it has to be fixed here. Oh, <laughs> you okay? Yeah. I don't have, this is the only pen I have, it's black. I'm gonna write this down for you here. Oh, you got a job for me. Uh, not really. We're not looking for this. No. <laughs> huh? You called us. You wanted this time to tell everyone your main message, which I believe you really haven't said yet. Well, visit www.snotrocket.com. And all the answers are there. Yeah, they're, they're there. That's good enough for me then. So, well, I'd like to thank you for this time, and thank possibly you. Uh, maybe we'll come back someday and uh, you know get a little more in depth with you. Not that we really want to by any means, <laughs> but we might have to due to our budget. So, for Tom, myself, and Rennie holding the camera, this has been Pro Wrestling Review, and uh, what the hell, we'll see you. Mother Hart this past week came out and said, I believe she's the phrase, it was disgusting for Stu Hart and Bruce Hart, and I believe Diana Smith to be on Raw this past week. And Bret Hart, hasn't, as of this taping, Bret Hart hasn't said anything, but it's, 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 he's about to. My message to Martha and Bret and the rest of the Hart family that maybe weren't there for all the wrong reasons, Owen Hart died two years ago. It's tragic, and it was a sad day for everybody, but it, two years of mourning is... It's, it's time to get on with your life. I mean, two years of mourning just isn't healthy for anyone. Stu Hart and Bruce Hart had their reasons for being there. Maybe Stu Hart realized with wisdom that comes with his age, realized maybe it was time to bury the hatchet. Bruce Hart had his reasons, and Martha Hart had her reasons not for being there either. I'm not blaming him for that. I'm not saying it's time to forgive and forget. I'm not saying Vince is 100% correct in this, but like I said, it, you're hurting your family's legacy. You're hurting the business. Stop mourning, and please get on with your life, because this isn't helping anyone. Well, sticking on the uh, Canada theme, I wanted to talk a little bit about Lance Storm and his debut with the, I guess you could say, WWF slash WCW this past Monday on Raw. Uh, one of the things that I remember about it the most was the fact that, you know, Lance Storm actually seemed excited when he showed up. And, it, you know, it could be the crowd, you know, being in Canada, in Calgary, Alberta. But, you know, this is something we really didn't see from Lance Storm during his stint with WCW. Basically... You know, uh, WCW gave him a catchphrase and made him say it every time he went out, and it got old, and so did Lance Storm. I mean, the guy's a great worker. He's a great competitor, and here's this company that just, they're handed this great talent, and they just don't know what to do with it. I mean, it's like handing a bum a million dollars and him looking at you with a quizzical look on his face. I mean, it's just, to me, it's just stupid. So, you know, uh, my plea, I guess you could say, or what I'm hoping for anyway, is that um, the WWF will learn from WCW's mistakes. They'll use Lance Storm the way he needs to be used, and hopefully we'll see more exciting moments from him in the near future with the new WCW. 
Well, just to keep with the Canada theme and a little bit to, of what Jim talked about with the Martha Hart thing, uh, my favorite target, uh, Bob Ryder, posted a column Tuesday morning, you know, hours after Raw had ended. And I don't know, I don't know if he's popping pills. I don't know, you know, if he lives in Candyland. But some of the, I don't know. Anyway, the, the title of his column was Martha Was Right, It Was Disgusting, because, you know, it, as Jim had referred to, Martha was disgusted that Stu and some of the Hart family members were going to be there. So he gets into it. He actually, you know what, I'll give him credit. He had me with the first paragraph where he was talking about how, you know, Bret Hart has been accused of really, you know, not being able to get over the whole Survivor Series situation. You know, but Vince also is another guy who just can't stop rehashing it. And that's true. He needs to, that's something that, you know, that needs to end. But then he just starts ripping into them, you know, about how how the hearts, you know, how could they attend Raw knowing that you know the family was torn apart as it was? And he said that you know the the fact that Stu and Bruce were actually at Raw shows how dysfunctional the family was. And he goes on with this gem: two of the Hart kids literally had to prop, prop Stu up when they announced his name. Yeah, well, it's just you know, stand up yourself, old bag. What were they gonna do? Of course they had to help him stand up. He's 85 years old and just had a pacemaker put in. I mean, what did you want him to do? You know, it was. I thought it was a nice gesture, at least on the WWF's part, that they on Raw. I mean, they could have done this off camera and said the patriarch, patriarch of the first family of wrestling, Stu Hart. And they, you know, they let him stand up for everybody to recognize him. But later, he gets on about how they did the, you know, the rehash of the Montreal screw job, and uh, you know, he was just saying that you know it's a shame that they had to do this in Calgary, and he says that. The reality, though, is that they were just props in McMahon's effort to embarrass and infuriate Brett and Martha. Yeah, I'm sure that they all sat around before Raw started and said, how can we tick off Brett this time? I think, you know, as I said, you know, say what you want about them rehashing the angle. You're right, it is getting old and it should, you know, it, it's maybe something they should have thought of a different ending. But did anybody stop to think that, one, that maybe since they met with the Hearts earlier in the day that this idea had been run by them, and that, two, that after this whole thing was over and after Vince McMahon had screwed Chris Benoit out of the heavyweight title, that Jericho and Benoit got the revenge and made Bret Hart, or, I'm sorry, made Vince McMahon and made Steve Austin look like idiots in Calgary. Nobody's bringing this up. So, you know, after Bob Ryder had rallied that Chris Benoit needs a push and Chris Jericho needs a push, well, damn it, for two weeks in a row, they've got the best pushes of their lives. And I give him credit, he did write about that last week, but there was more to Raw than that last couple of five minutes on the show. Thomas. Oh, thank you, Mr. Craftsman. <laughs> I'd just like to make maybe two quick points here. Last week I ran it about WCW, the WWF, when they relaunched WCW, basically picking and choosing your talent wisely. I cited the announcers as prime examples. This week I'd just like to say, in addition to making WCW separate from the WWF, giving it, giving its own feel, rather than just duplicate Raw, which the real, the old WCW did in recent years with the 20-minute interview to start, the matches, this and that. Give WCW its own feel. Now, I don't know how to do that just off the top of my head. I could probably cite some reasons and get arrested. But otherwise, just make WCW its own product. I don't know how at this time. And the other point I'd like to make up because we're running short on time here, just because Brian Christopher, I'm sorry, Mr. Christopher, I'm not di <laughs> talking directly at you, but now that Brian Christopher is fired by the WWF, this isn't a green light to put Scott Taylor when he comes back with Steve Blackman. So <laughs> WWF, don't do that. Scott Taylor can be a great asset in the cruiser light heavyweight division. Please don't stick him with Steve Blackman. It's just a shame that Blackman, a uh, couple things didn't go. Maybe he bummed a ride off somebody. <laughs> what I'm alluding to shouldn't be alluded, alluded to, so plug your columns, and that's it from me. As I'm carted off in handcuffs right now. You know, someone get the shackles and yeah, come on in here. But, uh... <laughs> If you want to read my column, you can pick it up on the newsstands tomorrow, or you can read it on the web. It's www.triblive.com sports. The radio show is every Monday at 5 o'clock for you people in Wheeling, West Virginia. It airs on 1370 AM, The Ryan Patrick Show, an ESPN affiliate. Thanks. <laughs> Thank it's like a spelling bee. It was like yeah. a spelling bee. <laughs> my column, Sharpshooter, appears in the Daily News. You can pick it up on newsstands everywhere right now, uh, or you can check it out on the internet at www.dailysmickeysport.com. And remember that Mick Foley story I promised you last week? Yeah, you'll get it this week. Okay. You sure about that? I promise. Well, if you want to enter the trivia contest, then really, why wouldn't you? It's ProWrestlingReview.com. <laughs> Click on trivia. You answer those three questions. And the question from the show, again, is how many WrestleManias did, a, did a Kamala appear at? You've got to answer all four. Name and address. City. 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 That's, see, that, it's my fault. Yeah, I apologize. Well, you know. Once again, the website is www.prowrestlingreview.com, and we'd like to thank our backyarder extreme, Mr. Timmy Rock, 
And please, no more backyard tapes. Uh, that's the last interview we're going to do because, frankly, we'll probably get kicked off the air for that. Once again, visit the website. Up, check our questions out. Check our columns out. Enjoy. And enjoy the show just for what it is, entertainment. Poorly planned, maybe. Just enjoy it. So for myself, for Brian, for Rennie, and for Jim, this is the Pro Wrestling Review saying we're going to go off to galactic space right now, and we'll see you next week.